Hello and welcome. My name is Colleen and I would like to thank you for joining us for this how-to St. Therese of the Little Flower of the Child Jesus Sacrifice Bead Kit. If you're watching this video, we want to say thank you for purchasing one of our kits. And this little video here that I've put together shows you step by step, very quickly and easily, how to put together your sacrifice beads. We made them in class a couple of weeks ago with our students. They were just in second to fifth grade, and it was such a hit and so simple for them that they loved this activity and wanted to share it with others. That's why we made the little sacrifice kits available. They did theirs on a white cotton cording. We've provided you with some nice satin material, but we'll show you. These are great. This has such a good organic feeling to them. The sacrifice beads can also double as a one decked rosary. There are 10 Hail Mary beads and one Our Father bead. This is a very special Our Father bead. It's made just for you. These were all handmade. I made them just for these kits and they're even scented like a rose. This is St. Therese of the Little Flower. So these are super special. You have some flower petals in there too from our ranch in Santa Maria. Those are also scented. So this is a delightful activity that I think the whole family will enjoy together. This can also be used as a one decade rosary. So with the 10 Hail Marys, each time you say one of the Hail Marys, you slide it forward. So if you were praying and then you had to go off and make dinner or change a diaper, whatever it may be, you have a space here. So you know, you set it down, you pick it back up, you know where you left off. The sacrifice beads, let me show you that if you're not familiar with sacrifice beads. St. Therese of the Little Flower from the 1800s, one of my favorite saints. She had such a simple devotion to Jesus. And when she was preparing for her first Holy Communion, she wanted to give more to Jesus. She wanted to sacrifice and give all that she could. So her and her sister came up with this, a little way to keep track of her sacrifices. So throughout the day, let's say she challenged herself. Now hers had more beads on it than this. We have 10 beads here. So you'll say, today I'm going to make 10 sacrifices, at least 10 sacrifices for you, Jesus. You took out the garbage without complaining. Move your little bead forward. You made your bed and mom didn't ask you to. Move your little bead forward. You can keep this in your pocket. And throughout the day, when you make a private, quiet, humble sacrifice, move your little bead forward. And let's say you go to bed that evening and you look and you're like, oh, I did pretty good, but I would have liked to have done more for Jesus. Tomorrow, I'm going to try to get on at least eight beads or nine beads. Maybe some days were really difficult and you go to bed and you see just two little beads slid forward. That's okay. Try again the next day. And then, as I said, you can double it as a rosary. Isn't that beautiful? We're just so excited to share this with you. And then here's the Miraculous Medal, which is a whole lesson on its own. This has so much potential just to teach and to lead spiritual evening with your family. Now, the little sacrifices that you do, notice you're moving them toward the cross, the ultimate sacrifice Jesus did on the cross for us. We unite our sacrifices with his by moving them toward the cross and toward St. Teresa, the little flower, asking the little flower for her intercession. Isn't that beautiful? So here we go. Are we ready? I also have my little devotion book, which I absolutely love. I want to read a little something to you. One sentence. Without love, deeds... You know, these little sacrifices that you do, good deeds for others. Without love, deeds, even the most brilliant, count as nothing. Wow. So in other words, if you're just doing this to be doing this, oh, this is kind of cool. And No, without love, little deeds count as nothing. So do little things, boys and girls, with great love. All right, you ready to begin? 
And of course, I have my little relic here with me. Third class relic, both of these, of St. Teresa the Little Flower. So she's just going to stay with us. All right, so if you open up your kit, open that up. And then inside, you will find the yarn, which is like a uh, satin cording. One bead, which is the Our Father bead. And then 10 Hail Mary beads. Those are the wooden beads. And we chose beads that were very organic, as I said, in nature. Okay, we don't like the little plastic pony beads. Those are great. You can, you can use those as well. But we took special care in really trying to coordinate these colors. So it had a very earthen feel and vintage. We wanted it to look vintage. A crucifix, miraculous metal, 10 of the beads, and some scented flower petals from a ranch in Santa Maria, a ranch called Little Flower Ranch. And these are dried petals from the ranch. They're also scented. So this is going to be a lovely experience for you. Take a little, mmm, a whiff of that bead. That bead is scented like a rose. Isn't that beautiful? You ready to begin? Okay, let's see here. I got some glue on my clipboard. Okay, let's move out here. Take your string and you're going to place your string in half like that, okay? Just put it directly in half. You'll notice the ends are, look like they're burned. That's because they are, all right? I have burned the ends for you. Just took a little match to it. Burned the ends so that you could thread it through the beads easier, all right? Otherwise, it kind of frays. It makes it a little difficult. You're gonna see that in the end, we burn a couple places. So children, do not do this without your parents. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, we want you to do the burning part. Okay, so take your take your string, like such, and you're going to have it in half. You're going to take your Miraculous Metal, just string it on, and put it to the halfway point. Now, as I said, everything is in here in your kit, everything that you need except the scissors and a clipboard. I have a clipboard just to make this whole beautiful process easier because the clipboard is going to hold it like that for me. It's going to hold on to it for me. Now, if you have someone in your family that's helping you, they can hold on to the other end of it for you. You can have somebody hold on to it like that while you make it. In class, we didn't have 100 clipboards, so a parent held the metal while the child strung on the beads. Okay, so get it even, just like that. All right, like that. Now, once you get it even, take it and just kind of hold it there. Before I tied it up there, and I don't like the way the string looks tied there. I don't like a knot up there, so I leave it like this. That's why you really need someone to hold the end for you. First thing you're gonna do, we're gonna work with the 10 beads. So take the little rose bead and set it aside. Take the cross and set it aside. Now you might look at your beads and you can see that they vary. They're all in the same color family. They're all of the same nature of the wooden and the printed florals and even somewhat looks like a little bit of a nature print on it there. They all go together, but I like to kind of look at them and say, okay, I don't want to put two of the tiger beads together and I don't want to put two red ones right together and I don't want to put two light ones like together. That's just me. You can put them on any way you want and it's not going to be wrong if you have two tiger ones together, two leopard print ones, whatever that is. I just like to kind of mix it up and vary it. All right, so I'm gonna start with my first bead. Here's what we do. You take the bead and you're gonna come in on the right side of it with the right string. And then you're gonna come in on the left side of it with the left string. So you're gonna go into the bead this way and then you're gonna go into the same bead that way. So take the right string, pick up the bead and go in on the right side like such. Then you're gonna take the left string and go in on the left side like that. See how I have it? Okay, so now the bead's on there and it's just like that. And you're gonna take it and just pull it down to the end like that. Now if you're like, what? Just watch that again. I'm gonna move this up a little bit so you can see. So my frame here is very small, but I wanted to be close enough so that you could see. So I'm gonna select another bead. This is the one I've selected. I'm gonna go in on the right side. Then I'm gonna take the left string and go in on the left side. 
See how easy that goes in with these edges burned? So now, this is the fun part. You just pull it right on down the railroad track. I call it a railroad track because it's parallel like that. Just pull it right on down like that. Choose another bead. Hmm, I'll go with one of these lighter ones. Go in on the right side. Go in on the left side. And then just pull. The satin cording is so easy to work with. A little bit easier, I found, than our cotton cording, which also is beautiful. I probably tried, with no exaggeration, boys and girls, 20 different cords and strings to find one that would be easy to work with because tying the knots can be challenging too. And you don't wanna make it so hard that it's discouraging. This is a very, very simple activity and such beautiful results. And I find it very therapeutic. I could sit and just make these by the dozens with some nice music on in the background and use it as a form of prayer. You can even mute it now if you'd like and put on your own music and continue till you get all 10 beads on rather than listening to me. <laughs> That's up to you. But I'm not gonna edit this and stop and start because I want you to see it in real time and that it does not take very long. Sometimes when I'm making them, I like to go really slow because I wanna enjoy this process. I find this very rewarding. Isn't that pretty? I searched high and low for these beads as well. As I said, a lot of um, activities, you'll find them where they make them with the little pony beads, those plastic beads, but I think these wooden beads just give it such a nice depth. And I hope that you have 10 beads in there. <laughs> We're gonna have counted 100 times, of course, but double check before you begin. Or if a bead goes rolling off and it went somewhere under the couch or the cat took it and ate it, let me know, okay? So I can get you another bead. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh, see, look, I have 11 beads because I was selecting through my beads. Yeah, if there's a mistake in that I've given you 11, Either you do an extra prayer or take it out. Okay, there's my last bead. In through the right and in through the left, then down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so once you get the ten on, I'm going to take it and kind of make sure that they're all slid down. Oh, this already just looks so nice. I'm easy to please. I get really excited when a project looks professional like that. That looks so pretty. All right, the reason I took it out from the clipboard is I wanna make sure that this is pulled all the way down, okay? Make sure that you've got these beads pulled all the way down toward the Miraculous Metal. Once you know that you do, then put it back in that clipboard to hold it secure. Okay, get it in there. Got that secure? Okay, now I'm gonna tie a knot right here, but I am going to tie a knot right about that far to leave space. Otherwise, you're not gonna have a place for the beads to slide down. So you wanna tie a knot right there. It is about three bead spaces. See there? Okay, so in doing that, here's all I do. You can get super fancy and tie barrel knots and whatever you would like, but for the basic everyday ma -pa and me making this, here's just simple like this. Tie it about right there. Now you can just tie another knot again, but I like to do one like this. I like to go, I like to take my two fingers, come around to make it nice and thick and double it like that. And then I'm gonna take that double knot and put it over that first little knot. And then sometimes I like to just take a little bit of time and really work with it, pulling it in tight. Okay, and you got to be careful when you pull it that you didn't pull it down into, because you want to leave that space. Okay, about three bead space. A little bit more is okay as well. Not too much though, you don't want to run out of it. You don't want to have a big old gap, wouldn't look right. Just want to have a space about like that. All right, next thing you do 
is the Our Father bead. Now you're not gonna come in on the right and the left side of this, you're gonna come in on both the same side. So I'm gonna pick up the right side and I'm gonna go in with both strings on one side of the bead. Now it might take a second to get that through there like that, but it works. Everything has been tested. If it doesn't work, pray, <laughs> because all of the holes in the beads, even though these were all handmade, all the holes are the same size. So now you pull that down there. See, the reason you put that knot there is that stops that bead. Okay, now you're gonna do it again. You're gonna tie right up against it, like that, right up against it. You want that up against the rows. You don't want it to slide. The rows should not slide around. And I'm gonna do that double knot thing again, just so now, let's see, that's probably good enough. That's not gonna go anywhere. But I'm just gonna do a double knot here. I'm gonna show you something. You could actually just go like this too. If a child's making it and wanna make it real easy, just tie another one of those. Okay, it's up to you. But I'm gonna do this one the same way I did that one. Before you tie it super tight, you might wanna just practice a little bit how you think you want to do your knot. But see, I take both strings, hold them like this, and then I go like this and I move it down, 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 down close. So it gets right up to that rose bead and then I scrunch it and I really work it. And the knots on these actually look pretty, I think, along with the rose. Unlike other strings and whatnot that we tried, this looks a little less messy, I should say. Okay. And the last thing, of course, is our crucifix. Now by the crucifix, you simply just take one side, slip it right there, in through the ring, and tie it. Now, as I'm sitting here thinking I had all my supplies, I just realized that I forgot my lighter, my matches, because I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do here in the end. So you just tie that on. I'm gonna tie it twice. Once, no, no, no fancy knots, just tie it two times, like you're tying a shoe. See that? Nice and tight. And then I'm gonna cut it in very close just leaving tiny, just a teeny tiny little tail on it. And I'm gonna burn that tail. So watch. See that? And I'm even gonna go a tiny bit more off of there. And then I'm just gonna burn that edge right there. Now it's best if you have a lighter I'm just gonna use matches real quick. Adults only. Children don't try this, okay? If you're doing this by yourself and you're under 18, go find someone to help you. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to just burn that little edge that I cut. See how that does? Looky there. Perfect, and what that does is it melts it and it seals it. And it looks pretty. And that's why I chose this color as well. I know sometimes when people are making beads and bracelets, they burn the end. And when you burn the end on some of the silk that are different colors, you see it. I mean, that still doesn't really bother me, but I just think this is beautiful because you don't see it. You don't notice the burned edge so much. And if you do, it kind of looks like a little bit like the rose. Look at the rose where it looks like it has kind of like a black burning in it. There we go. Absolutely beautiful. And then you take your sacrifices and you slide them forward. Oh, this, this uh, cording feels beautiful. Isn't that nice? And you know, because there is a little jump ring here, and you know how jump rings are, these little rings, Sometimes they could break off or whatever. Just just notice that, and you can just, pl with pliers, put them back on if that ever comes apart, okay? But otherwise, it's very durable. And when you burn the edges, it's not going to come undone. Enjoy. 
And I'd like to close with a little something from St. Therese. These were the last words before she died, the very last words. She was looking at a crucifix. So let's everyone, let's look at our crucifix. And here's were her last words. Oh, I love him. God, I love thee. And she died. St. Therese, the little flower, pray for us. Be with us, Mother Mary and sweet Jesus, and blessings upon all who take part in this beautiful spiritual activity. Be with their families. Amen. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>